Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson, and this is Real True Street Crimes. And today, I'm coming at you on Valentine's Day, and I like to say Happy Valentine's Day to everybody today. All the women, all the men, Happy Valentine's to all of you all. Very Happy Valentine's Day. And today I was just reminiscing, thinking about my dad. And here's one from the files of the fat man. I was thinking about when the first times I ever met Al Prophet and Scott Bernstein. And they was talking about my dad and they said they had went to the Southfield Police Department asking about some other brother in the Southfield Police Department asked them, what about Eddie Jackson? You don't know what you're talking about. If you don't know about Eddie Jackson and you telling narcotic stories, you don't know. So the Southfield police is who turned Al Prophet and Scott Bernstein on to who Eddie Jackson was and how powerful he really was, you understand? So let me give you one from the files of Southfield police. This was a Valentine's Day. My dad had been showering my mom with gifts and all kind of things and me and my sister was around playing with him and everything and about this time my dad said well it's about time to go butch had bought my father a whole bag of joints the day before and at this time marijuana was a way worse a crime than it is today they used to have to swallow their weed and then and, and, and then throw it back up in balloons and roll it they couldn't get caught with weed in this day in the 70s, 1970, to get caught with weed was a hell of a thing, okay? It wasn't like it is today. Now, my father is leaving on Valentine's Day. He had, he said he did it a no-no. He had some money at the house somebody had bought him. And uh, normally he don't have money at our house, but he had about a million dollars there. And let me give you a little background on this Trans Am. This Trans Am that my father was driving, it was only 14 of them ever made. At this time, the auto dealerships could put you together some race car shit for the streets. Now, Packard Pontiac in this day used to be located where Porterfield Wilson was, right there on Livinois and Seven Mile. That's where Packard Pontiac was located before they moved to Pontiac, Michigan, okay? Now, it was a salesman named Jim Bernard. He told my father they had 14 of the fastest Trans Ams that's on the streets. They was in the Indianapolis 500. Black Butch had to go to the Indianapolis 500 to pick it up. It was only 14 of them ever made. Ever. Okay? This is this white and red Trans Am. My father said he had this motherfucker on the freeway. It was a six speed. He said at six speed, this motherfucker would hit rubber when he hit six speed. He said this is the only car, and he has had many race cars and many fast cars because he was a race car. He always loved outrunning the police. So he always put together fast cars to outrun the police, and this was the fastest. He said he had this motherfucker on freeway and that motherfucker would hit rubber when you hit six gear and the, the speed thermometer was buried. Wasn't nothing left on the speed thermometer. He said this was this car was so fast, he never in his life drove it as fast as it was because that motherfucker was over 200. It was a race car on the streets. It was an actual race car. Only 14 of them made ever. He said this motherfucker... This particular morning, he was leaving our house in Southfield. He had a million dollars in the trunk and he was smoking a joint. He said a motherfucker Southfield police come fucking with him for nothing when he pull out the driveway and pull on around going towards 8 Mile to, to, to hit 8 Mile to swing around to the lodge to the freeway. So when my father hit around 8 Mile. It used to be a gang of, a part, uh, 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 of office buildings at 8 Mile. In, in Rutherford, when you get there at 8 Mile in West Hampton, it was a whole line of office buildings. So my father cuts through the lot where the office buildings are at, and the police cut right behind him with the lights on. My father swing around, come out of there, come around here, and then you have to swing it. You ain't going 
Detroit side of 8 Mile. My father said when he swung around out of there and swung around and hit Detroit side, he said when he hit that motherfucking Trans Ham, all he saw was a fucking fleet of smoke. He said he didn't see a Southfield police car nowhere. He said this motherfucker hit motherfucking West Hampton in 8 Mile to motherfucking Schaefer in 8 Mile. He said in less than goddamn two minutes. He said this motherfucker hit so goddamn. All he seen was a puff of rubber and smoke behind him. No police car. Okay, he outran him that cold. Went on, put his money up, and went ahead on, you know, smoking weed and fucking around for the day. So he came home in that car and parked that motherfucker in the driveway. That next morning, Southfield police had our house, the, the driveway surrounded, blocked off. They come in there, they want this car, you understand? This car is outran them. So my father arguing with these motherfuckers, tell them the car ain't did a goddamn thing. You don't know what the fuck you talking about. So, you know, we had your plate, nigga, you didn't outran us. So they took the car from my father that day. They impounded it. They bought the car back by two weeks later now. They had disabled this motherfucker. They bought it back. This The seats was gone. The engine was gone. God damn it, they bought it back on only wheels. The only thing left was wheels. Everything else was gutted when they bought that car back to our house in Southfield. And they told my motherfucking father when they rang the bell and dropped it off, they said, let me tell you one thing, nigga. You can't outrun a bullet. And my father looked at them hunkers and said, I'll be the next motherfucking thing next to it. God damn it. That motherfucking bullet would be there. And God damn it, I'll be doing my damnest to outrun that motherfucker. Boy, them motherfuckers were so hot with my father about that shit. That's what he told them. Motherfucker, I'll be the next motherfucking thing to it. God damn it. If that bullet be out there, I bet you I'll be racing that motherfucker. Boy, them white folks took the goddamn car like I told you. They bought it back, tore apart, and then my father, I ain't telling them. Go to the Southfield police. They'll tell you some shit. Southfield police got some stories about the fat man. Go and look at their motherfucking logs. They'll tell you some shit. That motherfucking nigga was a motherfucker and wasn't stutting about them goddamn hunkies. Now, how you gonna play by rules that's designed for you to fail? Y'all gonna play by them motherfucking rules. We ain't never played by them. Because we didn't follow them. We broke them. How the fuck you going to follow a system that's designed for you to fail and think you going to wind up a winner? You think you going to wind up wearing Versace suits and driving Rolls Royces, living in houses, spending millions of dollars? You think that white man got that in store for you? You wait on him. You wait on him. Unless you motherfucking spirit chucking, basketball dribbling, football catching, Super Bowl running... That's the only motherfucking way he got it in car. But I got to repeat my motherfucking guard, my motherfucking girl, Cardi B. Nigga, I make motherfucking money moves. I don't dance. I make real motherfucking million dollars moves. You understand? That's what the fuck we do. We don't dance. We make motherfucking million dollar moves and wear red bottles, Versace, motherfucking Brayonis, all the baddest motherfuckers you want. Now, if y'all don't want none of that motherfucking action... Don't get none. But I didn't had it. Because I wasn't listening to that white man tell me about don't break the law. Look at Donald Trump breaking every goddamn law known to man. He been the richest motherfucker all the time. And you motherfuckers crying about a nigga. Why don't y'all spend some time crying about this white for and try this on. Get y'all motherfucking ass up and go out and vote. Try that shit on. That shit would really make some sense if you really don't like lawlessness and crime breakers. Like y'all say, y'all so honest. So if you that motherfucking honest, go out and vote for an honest man instead of letting this goddamn crook rule the White House. Try Bernie Sanders. You might get some motherfucking wear. Starting with a minimum wage raise, which y'all ain't had in 40 years. You all haven't had a minimum wage in 40 years. And they've been coming from the top. Them motherfuckers making billions and trillions of dollars. They make 500 times what you do in an hour, in your lifetime. And you think I'm going to wait all my life on this white man to make me rich. Don't do nothing wrong. Don't do Kiss my ass. I'm going to be doing exactly what you do. That same shipment of cocaine that Mitch McConnell bring in here out of Columbia, I'll be trying to get my action and get rid of that motherfucker. I ain't no motherfucking dummy, and Mitch McConnell ain't either. Yeah. 
Y'all the motherfucking dummies. Mitch know how to slang that motherfucking cocaine and get that money. Mitch ain't no fool. Y'all are. Y'all the motherfucking fools voting for him and living like peasants. And that's sad that a motherfucker won't even get out and vote for a better day. Well, I'm out. Peace and love. Happy Valentine's Day. I'll be back at you.